the death of Kanika Jenkins, although years after her death, still lingers in the minds of many individuals as people still remember when the news broke of a teenage girl who was found dead in a Chicago hotel's walk-in freezer and her death caused uproar for the public with widespread protests in Chicago with people seeking justice for Kanika Jenkins at the time. There was foul play in her death to many people. However, the police were investigating with the assumption that it was accidental and that her murder had not been orchestrated. But as the case unraveled and preliminary findings by the police were being made, more questions were being raised than the answers currently available for many people. Now, in the last moments of her life, she had attended a party which had taken place in the Crown Plaza O'Hare Hotel in Rosemount, which is in the suburb of Chicago, Illinois. The party, according to eyewitnesses who attended the party, had started around 11.30 p.m. on the 8th of September, 2017 and had gone late into the night. Videos from the party show that the group had a good time and had fun all through the night. Many people who attended this party, which took place in a hotel room, remember seeing Kanika swaying back and forth all through the night, with a lot of people just thinking that she was drunk. Now, Kanika at the party had been seen drinking Hennessy, which for those of you who don't know, Hennessy is just a very strong alcoholic drink. But according to the people there, that was all they saw her take. Many of her friends at the party noticed that she was not her usual self. They say she was acting strange, and many people noted that in one moment, she was standing up and dancing to music, and then in the very next, she would be sitting down in the chair looking sad and off. Later, she would be seen walking through the night with some friends in the hotel hallways. And in the footage that you guys are about to see on your screens right now, you can see her staggering near the hotel's front desk at 3.20 a.m. in the morning. And at around half past three, Kanika had separated from her friends and her whereabouts were unknown as described by one of her friends who attended the party. And they started looking for her in the hotel but could not find her. In the next hour, at around 4.30 a.m., her friends contacted her mother, Teresa Martin, who arrived at the hotel at 5.30 a.m. to help with a search for her daughter. The mother, with her friends, helped search all the guest rooms for Kanika, which did not yield anything. And eventually, as time went on, they stopped looking as they all lost hope in finding Kanika in that hotel, which prompted an employee to call 911 to report the incident. Soon after, though, Kanika's mother went to the hotel management to request access to the video footage from the mounted movement cameras in the rooms. However, she wasn't given access to this footage until a formal police complaint was made to the police about her missing daughter, Kanika, which was reported on Saturday at 1.15 p.m. Family members reported a lack of urgency by the police towards this case, of which they felt as though should have been dealt with more quickly. The police were now involved, though, in the search for Kanika Jenkins with the help of her family, and there was no clue of her whereabouts until the footage of her staggering in the hotel corridor was retrieved from the hotel's CCTV footages. It wasn't until Sunday, though, a day after her disappearance, that she was found lifeless in the Crown Plaza Hotel's kitchen freezer, and she was pronounced dead at 12.48 a.m. Sunday by the Cooks County Medical Examination Office. The reports from the police department handling her case indicated that she had let herself into the freezer while intoxicated and couldn't find her way out. An autopsy was done immediately by the Cook County Medical Office, but it was still too early to determine if there was any sign of foul play in her death. But according to the Cook County Medical Spokesperson, it was indicated that they requested additional time to investigate the matter before coming to any final conclusions. And while attempting to solve the mystery surrounding Kanika Jenkins' death, investigators obtained numerous videos from the previous night's engagements. And in these videos, it shows that she was having fun with her friends and enjoying the night. And those videos that had been captured of the night and posted by her friends to social media had gone viral and now had been seen by thousands of people now trying to spark a protest with a cry for justice to the family and the friends of Kanika Jenkins. And with all the social media buzz surrounding her death, a lot of people were just angry and the police weren't able to, you know, put out the facts without being harassed or criticized for not knowing more than they already knew. In any case, the police disclosed that Kanika's body was found inside of a walk-in freezer, inside of a walk-in cooler, which was a part of an unused kitchen that the hotel wasn't using at the moment. And for those of you who are kind of confused on that, this is basically a walk-in cooler with multiple chambers, and the lights were turned off in both of the freezer's chambers when she entered the freezer. But the main question that the defense lawyers that were defending this hotel were unable able to answer was, why was the freezer open? 
And although technically the hotel was leasing out that freezer to a new restaurant using that part of the building at the time of Kanika's death, ultimately they were still responsible as it was in their possession at the time. And cameras in the hotel showed Kanika in her disoriented state of mind making her ways through the kitchen hallways. So I just want to know how no security guards, no employees, no nobody saw her making her way to an area that should have been locked up in the first place. However, investigations from the Cook County Medical Department ruled that Kanika's death was due to an accident and ruled out the possibility of foul play from other parties present in the hotel room during her death. And in the autopsy reports, the medical team showed no illegal drugs found in the body of the late Kanika. However, the autopsy report showed that her blood had incredibly high levels of alcohol. And in the same report, traces of topiramate, a drug used by medical practitioners to treat people with epilepsy and headaches, were found in her body as well. Reports from the medical department shows that when a person consumes topiramate together with alcohol, it can speed up the onset of both drugs. And it has been shown to hasten the start of hypothermia, which medical officers working on the autopsy noticed through lesions found in her stomach. In the report, her brain was found to be swelled, but it was ruled out to be a cause of her death as it did not seem to have any contributing factors to her death. And after the medical team from the Cook County Department had issued their report, the police came out and they declared that they had not ruled out any form of foul play in their investigation as they carried out investigations on all fronts to determine the real cause of her death. However, on account of the medical team, the combination of alcohol and topiramate in her body could have caused impaired memory, poor coordination, and impaired judgment, which the medical team concluded led her to exposing herself to the cold freezer, which was obviously not bearable to the human body and which inevitably led to hypothermia and her subsequent death. The release of the autopsy report was done on the same day that the family filed for a lawsuit based on negligence by the hotel. The family, in 2018, through their attorney, filed a lawsuit for $50 million against the hotel. And through their arguments, they maintained that the door to the freezer had a locked door that should have been used to lock the freezer's door to prevent the tragic death of Kanika Jenkins. And in photos presented to the courts, the Jenkins attorneys showed that there could have been way more that the hotel management could have done to ensure that this never happened. Although it does seem like this lawsuit is still ongoing as I wasn't able to find any final verdicts from anything about this case online. But in any case, I'm going to be leaving some links down below to some forms and articles of which you can read to find out more details surrounding this case because there were a lot of interesting theories and a lot of other info and videos about the people who were there with her on that specific night before her death. So if you're interested in any of that, links will be down below in the description. But with that being said, you guys already know who it is. And until next time, stay safe out there.